Hello everyone, my name is Rebecca Wohlrapp and I'm a WASP postdoc at Carnegie Mellon University. Before that I was also with WASP as an industrial PhD student. And I'm interested in human in the loop, autonomous systems, specifically in mechanisms to guide humans when designing and using these systems. And that is often connected to quality trade-offs. And today I'm going to present some of my recent research on quality trade-off explanations. As an example, we can consider an autonomous car that should move from a start location to a final destination, and there are several potential options. For instance, it could choose the fastest route, the least consuming, or the nicest route. So there are different objectives of interest, travel time, gas consumption, and the view. And it's important to understand what priorities these objectives should have. Maybe the default would be that all of them have the same priority, and in that case, the system would choose option two, which is the best overall balance of objectives. But in some situation, having fixed priorities is not what you want. When you're on vacation, maybe you want to prioritize the view more than usual because you want the nice and scenic route. One of the problems that these systems have today is that they often do not allow for changing priorities of objectives at runtime. And similarly, when you have Google Maps or other such systems, a lot of the times you can see different options, but it's unclear what the trade-offs are in the background when generating these options. And that is opaque to humans and quite hard to understand. To address these issues, I've developed techniques on one hand to elicit preferences and adapt optimization objectives at runtime, and on the other hand, since trade-offs are opaque, to explain the most important trade-offs and decisions using machine learning techniques. And I've applied them to software architecture, automated planning for robotics, and manufacturing. And today we can dive into the topic of automated planning for robotics, and I can show you a bit how these machine learning techniques work in that context to explain trade-offs. In this case, we consider an example scenario of a robot that should move from a start location to a goal location indoors, and the important objectives are safety, and there are some collision-prone segments in this map, privacy, and there are some private locations that we want to avoid, and travel time. Depending on the priorities that you set for these objectives, one route would be chosen or another. So here we can see an orange route, which is pretty short, and a black route, which is slightly longer. And depending on what you think is important, safety, privacy, travel time, all of them, one route might be chosen over another. And what I did here is to collect data from an even larger map and try different combinations of priorities for these objectives and generated thousands of plans and collected data for them with hundreds of variables. And you can imagine that if you have such a large data set, it's not feasible to analyze it by hand, but we want to break this large design space down to two dimensions in this case. That's what we do with dimensionality reduction techniques, and here I applied principal component analysis that really helps us to boil everything down to two dimensions, and we can see how these variables are connected to these two dimensions. And we can also see, for instance, how they are related to each other. The ones that are located close to each other in this plot are strongly correlated. So here we can see that if you have a high priority of privacy, your sum of travel time will also be high, which makes sense because you might have to take a detour to avoid private locations. Similarly, we can see negative correlations. So the priority of travel time is negatively correlated to the sum of travel time and the priority of privacy. And we can see that certain variables are more important than others. So in this case, the ones that are between this inner circle and the outer circle are more important than the ones that are close to the center here. So the priority of safety here is less important than the other priority variables, which also shows us that the main trade-off we are concerned with here is between privacy and travel time. Safety is not as important as we would have expected, maybe. If I had just shown you those thousands of plans, 
you wouldn't have found out about these correlations and these insights into what trade-offs are the important ones. So there it's really useful to have such plots that help us understand the trade-offs in our data. That is not the only interesting thing we can do. Another thing is that plants often belong to categories that share similar characteristics. And there we can apply clustering algorithms and see that there are four main clusters in our data in this case. One of which I call the balanced cluster because all of their values are close to the mean across all clusters. Then we have one that is called the fast cluster because it's categorized by high priority of travel time and low sum of travel time at the cost of privacy because we have slightly more intrusions than in the average cluster or in the average plan. We have one cluster that is called the intrusion avoidant cluster here, where the priority of privacy is pretty high, which is also reflected in the low sum of intrusions, but that is at the cost of travel time and collisions. So here, by looking at these clusters, we can also explain to humans what a particular plan looks like and what alternative clusters exist. This is not only interesting for automated planning, but also for software architecture, where we would explain trade-offs between performance, cost, and reliability. And yeah, it feels really promising in a variety of domains. For software architecture, a lot of the times, that is quite useful to help architects make decisions. But many of the challenges are actually connected to the stakeholders making decisions and how they collaborate with each other which is why I've also conducted a lot of empirical studies in the context of software architecture to understand how practitioners work and what their actual problems are. For instance, architects in practice often design such architectural models where you can see the components, the structure and the behavior of the system at a high level. And then there are developers in agile teams writing code and the architecture that is implemented is not always what was envisioned by the architects. A lot of times we have inconsistencies here, and that is one of the challenges I discovered. So what we did to avoid this and to help practitioners is to develop guidelines to keep architectural descriptions and code consistent and useful, and to help different teams collaborate with each other and create a common understanding of the system they are developing, I've developed the concept of living boundary objects that helps with the coordination between teams. And their architectural descriptions, if they are managed correctly, are one of the examples of boundary objects. I'm glad that this research has also received a lot of attention and awards at research conferences. To go back to the initial work of explaining quality trade-offs, I have a few areas of future work that we're currently exploring. So one of them is to explore similar techniques to explain quality trade-offs in other domains, for instance, security or manufacturing. And since it's so hard to understand PCA plots without someone who's seen a lot of them and can explain them, I'm creating techniques to provide natural language explanations and visualizations for human stakeholders, and also developing interactive decision support mechanisms for human stakeholders so that they can set their priorities the way they should. And this will help to create more high quality and understandable systems that are trusted by members of our community. Thank you very much, and if you have any comments or questions, feel free to reach out.